Hi there, welcome back here guys. In this lecture we have been talking about the differences between external and public. In this lecture we'll take a look in a bigger detail at the memory. So this lecture will be again additional information lecture. It will take some time, this will be one of the longer lectures. If we have enough information about the memory you can skip uh, this one. Okay, so for those, those ones that are staying here let's Create first example contract uh, on which I would like to uh, show you memory, how it works internally. Okay, so let's call this one, let's go to contracts and let's create here a new contract. We'll call it simply test.sol, we'll copy contract headers, so from a, from a faucet contract, let's get here license and pragma. Okay, so let's get it here, perfect. Now let's write here contract name, we'll not pay here much details here, we'll just call it uh, contract uh, test, okay. Not very creative, but I just want to get a job done here. And uh, let's create here also function, which will be testing and function also. Let's call it test function. It really doesn't matter. Let's provide here some accessors. Uh, let's say this will be, I will be accessing it uh, uh, externally, okay? So right here external, it can be also public, but I don't have an intention right now to ex access here any, uh, I don't want to call this a function from inside of the contract. So it can be external. And uh, let's write it will be pure function uh, returns uh, re returns some value and we'll return here unsigned integer so u int perfect. Now I can return here some value or actually let's do it like this. We'll, I'll show you one example uh, more examples at once. Let's expect to get here some value. Let's say I'll get here unsigned integer of let's say testing number so test number. Okay, so we are expecting to receive here test number. As I told you, when you're not specifying how many bits you have here, by default you have a 256 bits. Okay, and we'll return this value. Okay, so we can test it out. Return here test number semicolon. Now I will use here a special operator or a special keyword rather, assembly, like this. And in an assembly, in a curly brackets, you can write assembly code. This means you can write here low, uh, lower level code as in your normal Solidity language. Okay, it is also part of the Solidity, of course, but here you can access low level instructions. So you can access specific offsets of the bytes in the memory. You can access here your storage. You have a uh, more grand control over your resources, basically, when you, when you are using as assembly code. In the normal scenarios, when you're writing smart contracts, you shouldn't... Uh, you shouldn't be not 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 you shouldn't be able, but uh, you shouldn't need to use assembly. Okay, so if you are writing ordinary smart contracts, you really don't need to use assembly. But sometimes it can be useful, and definitely in this case it will be useful because I would like to show you how memory is allocated on lower level and how we can access uh, memory in, um, in basically from an EVM execution. Okay, so. In the assembly for now, what I would like to do here, I would like to just create here local variable. Uh, when you are in assembly and you are creating uh, variables, you need to write here keyword let and uh, not semicolon, but this is called uh, this column and a normal equal sign and you will assign here some value. Let's say number four and of course name for this variable. Uh, let's call it underscore number, okay? Or, no, or just a num. Okay, so instead of assembly, you are creating variables like this uh, let keyword, name of the variable, uh, colon and equal sign and uh, the value and you don't need to write here these uh, semicolons in the end you will get even error here okay so we have here number and now I will do here something interesting I will load here some data from the memory I will I will get here free mem free memory pointer so let's add here let uh, let's call it uh, free memory pointer FMP free memory pointer doesn't matter how you call it and let's assign here you can use your function mload this means to load something from a memory and you will need to specify a location in the memory you would like to load. I'll specify here uh, 0x40, like this. Okay, you don't really need to understand right now these lines of code or especially this one here. We'll be debugging it and you will understand it uh, throughout the lecture. Okay, so I'm, I'm loading here whatever, uh, whatever is on the, the space of the memory on the position 0x40. Uh, uh, there should be location of the free memory pointer. I will show you. Okay, now we can test it out, and we will copy this contract into Remix so we can debug this code, and you will see what values we are getting. Okay, so let's copy this smart contract. Let's open our browsers and let's search here for Remix Ethereum. Ethereum uh, Remix. Okay, we'll go to uh, Remix IDE. 
you know, this one, Ethereum Remix there is there, there, uh, here, up, up here. Okay. Okay, so when this will be loaded, I will create here a smart contract. So let's go to contract sections. Let's click here on storage.sol and we'll just, uh, we will just over override this. So I will simply remove everything from here. Of course, leave here a pragma and this. And let's copy here, copy here, paste here your contract test. Let's save it, please. We are going to compile it. So let's click here on the left side to the compile menu. So let's compile and let's compile this storage sol. As soon as this will be compiled, you will get the bytecode. So when you will click here, compilation details, you can click here on assembly. And I want to pay you attention here for these lines of here, push AD, push for the MS store. And the same here when a contract is executed, when some function of the contract is executed, you, you are doing the same stuff, push AD, push for the MS store. Okay, you can also see a bytecode here. The same thing here, 60 AD mean push, this means push AD, 60 40, means push 40, 52 means uh, MS store. So basically what they are doing, I'll zoom it in for you. Basically what you're doing, you are ac accessing memory. So you're accessing memory at zero X 40 and you are storing there 80. Okay, that, that's what's happening here. Okay, but what, what does this do? Okay, so to understand it better, we will get into smart contract. Okay, let me unzoom it, that is too much. Okay, so since we have, a hit, since we have it compiled, we can, uh, we can deploy it to the network. So let's click here on the left side to this menu, deploy and run transactions, and we'll deploy the contract. So let's click here, deploy. It is deployed now, I will clear the window here. So we'll click here, this uh, circle, cross out circle. And I will go to the contract, here is your deployed contract of on the left side, and I will open it. You have here access to your test function. See it here, this function, and it, let's send here a parameter, let's pass here a parameter, let's say value of uh, three, and let's uh, click here test, this will send a transaction. Okay, here we have a transaction. Now what we can do here, very interesting, we, we, of course we can click at this, <laughs> that's the first thing, we can uh, inspect that we have a, a deco decoded output is a value of three, that's what we are returning because we are passing inside the tree and we are returning the tree, this testing number, but what we have here, interesting enough, is a debug button. And we can debug execution of this function. Okay, so let's click here debug. And this will open debug window. Now in the debug window, you can move from a line to line with this button here, stop over forward. Or you can write a breakpoints to jump into the specific line. For example, here, ML, M load, and here I will jump here. But before we will jump anywhere, let's inspect here the left side. First thing here, you can see here the instruction. So you can see here bytecode of your of your smart contract. I'll zoom it in. Of your smart contract. Then you have here details of current step of execution. So for example, on on uh, what is the step? So the 100 AD execution step. Then how much gas you will spend? How much re remaining gas you have? There's the address of your loaded contract. Then you have a stack here, the structure on which you are pushing the values of your operations from a bytecode. So on top of the stack, you are pushing some values. All right, and uh, then you have here, what else you have here, interesting enough. Uh, we have here uh, memory, that's very, very important one because about this I would like to talk. And you can see here on the memory, at the position 0x40, you have already 80, 80 stored, okay? It maybe seems like it's on 0x50, but it's really, it's stored on a 0x40. I will explain uh, shortly what is this, okay? And then you have a call stack. Call stack should uh, be just the address of your call stack. This should be address of your contract, if I'm not wrong. Uh, 9138, and here is a uh, 9138. Yeah, that's a loaded address, okay? And they call data. So that's the data you have sent in the transaction, which you, you should execute, and that's the, that's the identifier of your function. This is the value of a tree you are sending. I will also inspect this very shortly. All right, so first let's take a look at this here. At the, before even the function is executed, or when, when the function is executed, you can see here there is allocated in the memory on the 0x40 AD. Okay, so what does it mean? You, you saw this instruction, push AT into the 40 address. That, that's, that's what's happening, that's what is happening here. So you have this memory, I, I will get my pen here and I will write it, let's say I'll write it here. Okay, so memory memory is the 
is uh, linear, okay, so memory is something like this. Okay, is a chunk of a bytes, and let's imagine here have some values. Okay, memory, and memory is a chunk chunks of a 30, 32 bytes. So that's how it's memory allocated. If you need more memory, you will uh, you will allocate uh, 30 of two bytes more, 32 bytes more. Okay, so when you are storing some values into memory, you will specify offset on which you want to store it. For example, here. Okay, here on this position, you have here zero and, and so other values on this position. And you will store this value on the chunk of 32 bytes. So your posi your value will be stored on this position and, and from this position, 32 bytes. Okay, so value will be stored in this chunk here. In this here. Okay, of the zero, f, and, hex and hexadecimal characters, right? And so on. So the, your value will be stored here on these chunks here. And you can see these addresses here this memory. Okay, so here is a, for example, I will remove this. Okay, so uh, here you should have a, here zero, zero x zero, you have here, this is a 16 bytes chunk, this is 16, here is, here is another 16 chunk, 16, here is another 16 chunk, and so on. So when I'm saying store me number 80, and storing number 80 into 0x40, I'm saying here, store it me here, right? 0x40, and take the chunk of 32 bytes. So here, 16 bytes, all right, and here, take the 16 bytes, in total 32, so this, this chunk is 32 bytes, and I'm storing here 80, as you can see here. Okay, I can verify to you that this is really, this is really uh, 32 bytes, so I'll copy this on the 0x40, I will copy these bytes here, Copy all of them here, okay, copy them. Let's go to your coding editor, let's paste them somewhere here, let's say here, and let's copy the other chunk of bytes, so let's start here, like this. Let's paste it, and now let's inspect this. This should be 64 characters long, which mean 32 bytes, because half of it is the number of the bytes you are getting. So this is definitely 32 bytes, a chunk starting at the position uh, 0x40. Okay, so we are storing here 0x80 x here, and what does it, what does it says here is that when the smart contract needs to allocate some other values into the memory, it will be allocating them at the position 0x80. So basically what we'll do in the virtual machine, we'll allocate more memory here. So you have here, I will be writing here, you will basically allocate more memory here. Okay. And you will have here 0x6, uh, 0x7, 0x80. And from this position on, you will be storing the values to the memory. So here, you will have these chunks of the memory and there will be values stored. All right, and so on, 0x90, and the values will be stored in these chunks on. Okay? This will be where will be memory stored. Okay. So I think that's that's clear now, right? So if you have any questions, you can ask them. And let's inspect also the other things here. I will I will disable this, okay? And I will I will go will move more in our code. I need to somehow that's too much zoom, okay? And uh, what we what we are going to inspect now? Uh, first thing here in a stack when the function is executed, I think this value of a tree. You can see it's a t value we are sending in the in the transaction as the as the argument here, test number. Okay, I think it's that's what they pushed on top of the stack. You can see this number three here. Also the call data here, inspect this call data. This is a signature of your function with the Ketsak uh, 256 encoding and zero three is the value you are passing in. This test number, that's your call data. Okay, so uh, we can copy it somewhere in here. So let's copy it, let's paste it here. Okay, and uh, now let's encode your function. So we have a test function is expecting you in 256. So we'll go to get uh, 256. Okay, and let's get here input of, uh, we are calling it just a test, right? And you int 256, 29e, this is a value, right? Copy first four bytes. Okay, and yeah, that's first four bytes of our 
function. So you can you notice this will be first four bytes. Okay, eight selected. This means four bytes. Okay, and this re renaming thirty two bytes is the parameter you are sending. So the tree. Okay, that's what they are sending the fun function when they have been executing this function. Uh, we are passing here a function, uh, basically identifier with the hashed version of the function uh, name and the parameter, and the, this trivia is what we are passing in. Okay, then we'll go more into the code. All right, so I have here a couple of breakpoints, and I will go now to the here you have a, when you scroll up here you have this arrow to step into the next line, and here you have a step to the next breakpoint. I'll click this. I should step here. Uh, here I'm just loading simply this 0x40 from a memory, the position which, which should get me to the pointer. This should, should, me, should, this should get me value from the memory of a uh, AD. This, this should get me 0x80. I'm just doing it as an example. We don't need to do much here. Let's jump over the next line. So I will click, click here and I will jump here in a return and they should return the, my uh, value. Actually, let's go for a second back to the previous breakpoint. So let's click here to the previous breakpoint break point here. Jump into previous breakpoint, and I would like to show you that this number four here is not stored in the memory, but it's stored actually on top of the stack. You can see here in the stack, this value is uh, here stored on top of the stack when the when you are assigning the variable, basically local variable in assembly, this is the storing variable on top of the stack. And as soon as assembly is done here, when you're going to the this line of code, it will be pushed out from the stack. Okay, so that's when only here you can use a value inside of this uh, block here. Okay, guys, and that's basically what I wanted to explain you. Let's jump here back, back to the return line here. So let's jump here over the next breakpoint, click here. All right, and you can see we are not doing anything with the memory, so there is no necessary to allocate more space in the memory. So we are still still on 0x50. Uh, That's the entire memory we have, and we have here 0x80 stored in this memory spot here, the chunk over 32 uh, bytes. Okay, I think now it's everything is explained here. There is also storage, but storage should be empty in this case, and we will be talking storage in a separate lecture. I will leave this AI lecture here, we'll continue next one, and it will be also a long lecture. I would like to continue with this memory. I would like to show you more examples how the actual data are stored in the memory because so far we are not storing anything here. All right, guys, so that's gonna be it, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.